How many of you agree that, that we kind of need to figure out how to posture ourselves, carry ourselves, walk through this time? And my assignment is sort of to set the series up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the staff counselor, and I read a lot, think a lot. And um, what, here's how I want you to look at today. I want you to look at today like a halftime adjustment. You know, your, 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 your football team, you're on the team, and you're out there playing, and maybe you're, you're not a, ahead by as much as you thought, or you're, maybe you're behind by a little bit. The coach's job is to make adjustments. You know, we're not, our line aren't blocking right. We're this, that, or the other. So to be quite honest with you, my job is to awaken us to some of the adjustments we might need to consider making. And um, I'm going to try to be nice. I really will. And, uh, you know, you, you can let me know afterwards if I succeeded at that. Um, you guys are out there mixing it up. And um, I just want to help equip you a little bit on how to mix it up well. Here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that God, through this series, this four-week series, I'm praying that God doesn't just say some things. I want him to do something. How many of you love for God to do something in your heart? Raise your hand. You'd love for God to do something. Now, I didn't say in their heart, but your heart. One more time. How many of you like God to do something in your heart? All right. Just check. How about up there? Did y'all raise your hand? Okay. Just check it. All right. What emotion accompanies most conversations about issues right now? Talk to me. What emotion do you see a lot of right now? Anger. 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 Passion is an interesting word. I heard that. Passion is kind of a sneaky way to hide anger in the context of our conversation. I'm just passionate, dude. I'm just passionate. That's what I used to tell my elders when I'd yell at them. I'm just passionate. <laughs> All right, let me talk about anger for a minute. Here's a really cool scripture. Look at this scripture. James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. This you know, my brother, beloved brethren. Everyone must be, what's it say? Quick to hear. Say it with me. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Let's, let's read that one more time. What should we be? Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Gosh, wouldn't that just change the world? It would just change the world. Look what the rest of it says. For the anger of man always achieves God's purpose. Anger never works, dudes, ma'am, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. Anger never works, man. Come on. Let me tell you a couple things about anger. Anger operates from a part of your brain that ain't very bright. <laughs> anger, <laughs> anger operates from a part of your brain that just wants to protect you. And because its goal is to protect you, it reacts really fast and really sloppy. In other words, as soon as something looks like it's drifting somewhere you don't want it to go, rawr, and then you realize it didn't go where you thought it was going to go. But it's too late because you're already angry. Here's another thought about anger. Anger's triggered by something you need that you're afraid is not going to happen. Something you think should happen that you think is not going to happen unless you help it. And anger is our way of helping it. All right? Now, as you can tell, I don't think anger is helping. I have three suggestions. How many of you would acknowledge I'm a little bit older than most of the people in the room? I've been in ministry almost 40 years now. Why am I telling you that? Because I just want you to take a breath and, and give me the grace. This older guy... Older, I didn't say old, older guy is going to give you three suggestions on how you can change the way you're playing the game. And I think we need to, by the way. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to try to be nice. Number one, your beliefs, three points that I think will help you change the way you're playing the game. Number one, your beliefs define you and blind you. Your beliefs define you and blind you. Most of the beliefs you live by and will fight over you didn't consciously choose. 
We've been here before when I've spoken. How many of you got to pick the family you were born into? Anybody remember saying, you know, I want it to be, you know, in this neighborhood, this gender, this color skin, this type of dad, this type of mom, this political viewpoint. Raise your hand if you remember getting to do, choose that. Here's the deal, guys. Most of the things you fight over were settled in you by the time you were about seven. The stuff that your sense of what's right and wrong, just and unjust, that person is going to probably act this way. That person's probably going to act this way. All that stuff is subconsciously absorbed. I think there's a couple statements here. They came, your, your beliefs came with your early life experiences through what we call automatic learning. You didn't take them, look at them and say, oh, I think I'll adapt that and accept that as a belief. You just did. Now, here's the problem. Then we live in a subconsciously selected bubble of belief. Bubble of belief. What does that mean? How many of you listen to the same news program all the time? How many of you listen to the same commentators? How many of you hang out with people that believe what you believe? Now, let me say something. I see a few of you scowling at me already. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sort of joking, but I'm sort of not. Because here's the deal. I do want to take a toy away from you today. I really do. I want to take a toy away from you today. And the toy is anger. I want to take your toy away. Because I'll be honest with you guys. You're embarrassing us. You're embarrassing us. When I say us, I mean the capital C body of Christ. You're allowed to have opinions. You are allowed to have opinions. You're allowed to have passionate opinions. But dear Jesus, be careful how you proclaim them. Now, here's the deal, guys. Don't you dare assume what I think about anything. I'm going to get through this whole message, and I'm not going to mention one issue that you could leave this room saying, oh, he's on that side of that issue. I'm not going to mention one issue. Well, I am, but not any of the ones you think. I'm going to fall on a side, but I hope I can talk you into falling on the same side with me. Bottom line, guys, our beliefs define us but they also blind us. How about this as advice? How about fact check yourself? You heard that term lately, fact check? How about fact check yourself? You hear people say, well, well where, where, where? I believe this. And you're like, oh, wow. Well, did you, did you see this? Oh, I, they, they don't tell the truth. Oh, wait a minute now. You believe them. They tell the truth. But they don't tell the truth. Can I give you a little secret? They're all lying. I mean, I mean, you think I'm joking? I'm not. Everybody's got an agenda. How many of you know you can lie by not telling the truth? Or you can lie by not telling all the truth? Or you can lie by putting the truth in the wrong light? They're all lying. We got to rise above it. Once our beliefs are established, we see what we're looking for and hear what we listen for. You pick out a car. I want a red. I'll just go ahead and say it. I love my little BMW convertible that I sold, and I'm so stupid. One of the dumbest mistakes I've ever made in my life. <clears throat> Bottom line is, you pick out a car. I want a red blank. What do you see all the next week? You see a red blank. Whatever that is. Why? Because there's a little part of your brain. Listen now. There's a little part of your brain, the fancy name is reticular activating system, a little part of your brain that when you say, I want, you know what it says? Yes, sir. Let me go get that for you. I want blank. Yes, ma'am. Let me go get that for you. And that part of your brain starts looking for everything that will help you get that. Now, here's the problem. It does the same thing with beliefs. Well, I believe this. You know what that little part of your brain does? Collects data to support your belief and filters out data that challenges your belief. And here's what I'm trying to say to you. If you don't intentionally put yourself in a position 
to be challenged in what you believe. You're believing lies. I promise you, you're believing partial truths. Because no one is all right all the time, except for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three suggestions. Number one, your beliefs define you and blind you. Number two, don't lose sight of God's scoreboard. This is God's game, man. You know what? Can I give you a little hint? You're players on the team. We can fire you. If you don't do your, not, not really, but you're not the owner. You got a role to play. You got a coach. You got to figure out what your part is. Don't lose sight of God's scoreboard. There's a little line after that in your notes. Be careful how you define a win. I love this little look. I think it's acrostic. What's important now? Honestly, that's what I'm talking to you about today. In my opinion, I have the privilege of talking to you about what I think is possibly one of the most important things the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be wrestling with right now. What we're talking about today and how it how it postures you for the subjects that are coming. How many of you know, how many of you know being, being right's not the point? It's just not, man. Is there a hierarchy of importance in God's value system? Is there, this is important, this is important, but less, this is important, but less. Is there a hierarchy in the value system of God? Are there things that are important, but not important enough to violate this? You follow me? How many of you think it wouldn't be a bad idea to ask Jesus? And they did. They came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? Now, here's what's interesting. He didn't say, there's no such thing. They're all equal. It's not what he said. He said, Boom, here's my answer. The, what's, Jesus, what's the number one issue on the heart of God? It's, it's, it's the 2022 election. It's this issue in the newspaper. It's this political issue. It's this cultural issue. Are you kidding me? What's the number one issue, Jesus? On the heart of God. Say it in a word. Say it. Up there, say it. That was good. I like that. We could do a little go around or something. What's the number one issue on the heart of God? Listen, do other issues matter? Yes. Are you allowed to have an opinion about issues? Yes. I'm a passionate dude. Trust me. I love to argue. When I go out in the foyer after the service, fuss with me, man. Just come bigger, don't come, because I like to argue. But here's the deal. Keep, keep number one, number one. Jesus, what's the number one thing on the heart of God? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first and foremost. The second, he, oh, oh, there's no hierarchy. Jesus said one and two. That's a hierarchy, folks. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Number one, guys. Oh, well, this issue is this issue's critical. <laughs> I know it is. But not more so. Not more so than number one. Here's how I hear that. Jesus, what's the greatest, most critical change my relationship with you should bring about my life. Political correctness, the right opinion about this, the right opinion about that, being mad at those people, making sure those people don't win, making sure this doesn't happen. It's not what he said, man. Jesus, what's the biggest change you coming into my life is meant to bring? Love, love, Chipper, love. It ain't hard to love people that agree with you, man. Give me a break. Love. 
the biggest recognizable trait that gives you the aroma of Jesus is not correctness on an issue. It's love. It's love. Do you realize that every person you have an issue with is a person God loves and for whom Jesus died? I've never met a person that Jesus didn't love. Have you? I kind of thought we're supposed to do what he does. You love everybody you've met. Listen to this verse. Uh, Romans 14, 15. For if because of food, here's what I want you to do. In, in, in the word food, I want you to insert your, the issue you're passionate about. Whatever it is, politics, gender, sexuality, race, whatever it is. For if because of your views on this issue and the way you handle them, your brother is hurt. You're no longer walking in love. Dude, I've seen some of your posts. What Bible are you reading? What Bible are you reading? Are you going to talk to me like that? Yeah, I am. What Bible are you reading? How many of you know you can't achieve God's purposes by the devil's ways? You can't achieve the right thing by doing the wrong thing. For if because of food, whatever your issue is, your brother's hurt. And please, please remember, I'm not taking issues. You can't sit there. Oh, he means those people. No, I mean you. I mean you. If you're thinking I mean them, you're who I'm talking to. (laughs) For if because of your issues... Y'all don't make me laugh. Now this is serious. <laughs> you turkeys. For, <laughs> for if because of your issues and the way you hold them, carry them, project them, fight for them, your brother's hurt. You're no longer walking according to love. Don't destroy with your issues and the way you carry them and fight for them. Him for whom Christ died. Don't do that. Oh, well, they're losers. Dude, you missed the point. You missed the point. I have a simple rule. I apply it to preachers. I apply it to everybody. Very simple rule. Whenever you're about to do something, you're about to hit, you're about to hit send. You're about to post that sucker. Ask yourself, can I picture Jesus saying what I'm about to say the way I'm about to say it? God help me, I hope you can't. How many of you know Jesus could tell you you were wrong and feel, you feel loved at the same time? You know, the woman that was caught in a sin, he didn't pat her on the back and say, go girl. <laughs> he said, go and sin no more. What was he admitting? Girl, you sinned. What you did wasn't good but I love you and I'm with you and I'm for you. You know, most of the people you disagree with just don't know what you know. They don't see what you see. They've not been where you've been. How do you expect them to know what you know? Do y'all agree that what we say can be overshadowed by how we say it? I had a conversation with one of my kids a while back and uh, over one of these controversial issues and to open the conversation, I don't remember my exact words, but they were in, instantly inflammatory and attacking. Like I asked the question like, how stupid is it somebody believes this? And that was my attempt to open a conversation. <laughs> my daughter, thank, thank the Lord, she, she, you know, she kind of paused a moment. She said, Dad? you realize that really wasn't a very inviting way to start the conversation. And I, listen, honestly, I'm so stupid. I didn't catch it. I was like, what do you mean? And then she said it back to me. 
And I thought, pretty stupid. <laughs> pretty stupid. The significance and value of other human beings doesn't depend on what they do or their views on the issues. It depends on who they are. And you know what? God loves them all. Every single one of them. All right. First point, our beliefs define us and blind us. Second point, don't lose sight of the scoreboard. Number three, whose side is God on? Whose side is God on? Look at this slide. <laughs> we all know the truth, and it's not orange. I mean, I mean, let's face it. Orange is an ugly color. Let's face it. And listen, none of you look good in it. So just quit wearing it. Quit wearing it. All right, look at the next one. Look at the next slide. Have you ever asked this question in your marriage? Colleen and I are fussing. And you're like, kind of like, you just can't come to grips. You ever, you ever kind of like, God, whose side are you on here, man? You ever done that? Well, we've learned something. Next slide. There's always three points of view on every issue. There's mine, there's yours, and there's God's. There's mine, there's yours, and there's God's. You know what? It's not your job to inflict yours on people. It's your job to figure out what God's point of view is. Get there yourself and then bring people with you. You follow me? It's really, really important. Another thing we learned is this. Any movement we make toward God, wow, we automatically move toward each other. Any movement we make toward God, we automatically move toward each other. We got a job to do here, folks. And I'm a little worried about us. All right, whose side has God on? Interestingly, Joshua asked this question, and he received a really interesting answer. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, they'd come out of the promised land. They're about to start taking, they come out of the wilderness. They're about to start taking the promised land. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? Are you for us or against us? Are you on our side or their side? Isn't it crazy what the angel said? Neither one. Neither one. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. What? Here's the deal, guys. Your, your job's not even to figure out what a win is. Your job is to just find the Lord, the captain of the Lord's army, and follow him. What is he? Where is he? What's he doing? And you're not going to find that on your favorite news source. You're not going to find these little letters. Of, oh, man, these people keep me up on all the, the truth. They're all lying, man, a little bit, at least a little bit. What did Joshua do? Joshua fell on his face to the ground in reverence before God. I'm at your command. Tell me what I should do. I'm at your command. Tell me what I should do. Gosh, I like people like that. The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. What place was he standing facing a battle that he wanted to go one way or the other? And the angel, the presence, the purpose of God said, fall on your face. I'll tell you how you need to handle yourself in this situation. This blows me away. Joshua did as he was told. Joshua did as he was told. I so want you to be able to say that about me. Chipper did. What he was told. Does obedience matter? Come on, man. 
Does it matter if it, you see something happen or an issue or some opinion and you get all riled up and you want to let them hold it? Does it matter if you pause and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What if God says, shut up? What if he says, don't make things worse? Don't add fuel to the fire of anger and bitterness. Don't confirm everything they already believe about you. You realize that's what we're doing? We're just confirming everything people believe about us. Chipper did what he was told. Gosh, I want God to be able to say that. Don't pursue your cause and frustrate God's. Don't pursue your cause and frustrate God's. Whose side is God on? Neither and both. You know what? We're all a little bit right. We're all a little bit wrong. Now, if I could say our attitudes are way wrong, way out of bounds, way off the reservation. All right, let me close with two thoughts. And I would say this is part of, this is a way to say what I said at the beginning. Why? Part of what I love about our church, part of what I love about this guy over sitting over here, Pastor Greg and his son, Josh, is this. Our goal as we go into these tricky subjects. Our goal is not to convert people to our position. It's to love and honor them while God converts them to his. <clears throat> See, some of us, we just know we're right. We're just right. So you stupid people, just hurry up and get your butt over here. Well, here's the problem. Here's the, listen to me now. Here's the problem. Everybody, what, you know what? Everybody in this room, whatever you believe makes sense to you. It makes sense to you. How many, went, how, many, how many of you did God have to go through quite a little bit of a process to get you where he wanted you? Raise your hand if you got guts to admit that. Well, are you not going to give that grace to other people? Oh, well, they, they believe this about that. Well, you believe this about that still. How many of you used to believe stuff that now you know is pretty stupid? Are you going to give them time? Are you going to give them time? Our goal in this series, our goal every time we have church, the spirit of this ministry is not to make you converts to Seacoast. It's make you converts to the person, power, and purpose of God. And we're willing to risk, we're willing to risk talking about topics that matter and maybe not handling them in a way that everybody's excited about. Because we're just doing our best to create an environment of genuine, honest seeking. <clears throat> Second thought. How do you posture your heart? How do you, how do you frame and, and, and just hold your heart as you walk out those doors? Three things that we believe around here. Number one, God loves everybody. Friend or foe. God loves them all. Yes or no? Yes. Number two, everybody needs Jesus. Number three, it's the Holy Spirit's job to guide them into all the truth. Not yours or mine. And you know what? He might do it differently than you would. He might, he might be nice to them instead of yell at them. He might think loving them before they get it works better than making them earn it. You with me? I just believe God wants us to, to land in a different place, to live from a different place. Can you have strong opinions? Absolutely. Can you just let them fly however you want to? 
Please don't. Please don't. Number one, you embarrass yourself. But more importantly, you embarrass the person who bought you and owns you. Let me pray for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Lord, give us the grace to fall on our faces before you. Give us the grace to say, forgive me, Lord, for I've sinned, but expressing my thoughts my way any old time I felt like it. God, help me to restrain myself, to yoke myself to you and allow you to manage what I think, what I say, and what I do, and the way I say and do it. Please, sir. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.